Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How are you, my friend? We are on the verge of the Saratoga meeting, opening day tomorrow, big racing on Saturday. There you go, Matt. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of a weird uh, opening weekend for Saratoga because we already had Saratoga this year. Of course, that was just the quick Belmont Stakes Festival. But now we're back for the real thing. The real meet at Saratoga starts on Thursday. As Matt said, big day on Saturday. It looks like you're up there already, huh, Matt? I am. I'm, uh, uh, you know, at the family uh, family place, about 45 minutes uh, east of Saratoga. Okay, well, don't give us too much information. You know, people knocking on your door looking for picks. Hey, you're not uh, the place. <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing. Hey, uh, big, big uh, holiday weekend last weekend. Uh, for me, the star of the show was next. Next, yes. Okay, let's do it. Next, next was next was fantastic. Next, yeah. next was fantastic in the Brooklyn. Uh, what a horse who's uh, running. That was the shortest he's run in eight races. He's won seven of them. He's winning by 10 lengths. Uh, I don't know if he's ever been more impressive than he was in the Brooklyn. Next, I think should start being talked about as one of the best horses of America, even if he runs at the longer distances. What do you think? I, I agree. A terrific horse. And boy, he comes down the stretch with a an impressive turn of foot and just crushes the field. I mean, he beat Krupe, and Krupe's a, a, a darn nice horse for uh, Todd Pledger. I, when I see him run and win, Brian, all I think about is, not all I think about, but one thing I think about is bring back the Breeders' Cup Marathon. Yeah, well, he'd be unbeatable, I think, going going the Breeders' Cup Marathon. Um, yeah, the, the way he sprints home after running nine or ten furlongs already, just just really impressive. Uh, Matt, one horse we won't see Saratoga on Saturday. By the way, Saratoga, there, you're supposed to get a lot of rain there uh, later today, uh, a little bit tomorrow. But then by Saturday, we're expecting fast track and hopefully close to firm. Maybe not quite firm for the turf course, but Saturday should be good. One horse we won't be seeing on Saturday, of course, is Casa Creed. Uh, the Kelso is one of the three graded stakes on Saturday, and we we thought we were going to get to see Casa Creed, the four-time graded stakes winner at Saratoga. Yeah, well, he has certainly done the, done the ownership group well, uh, uh, year after year after year, uh, uh, performing at Saratoga, getting the wins, graded stakes on the turf. Uh, uh, makes you want to think about Four Star Dave. Yeah, yeah, Four Star Dave. That's right. Uh, maybe uh, a Casa Creed, one of one of the best middle distance miling uh, turf horses, middle distance turf horses of the last few years in America. So he has been retired with a minor injury. We are going to see some good horses at Saratoga, and we're going to start with the Diana, not which is a Grade One, half a million dollar race on Saturday. The uh, Diana is going to go off at race ten. So uh, not the first of the two stakes we're going to cover, but a really awesome field, Matt. Yeah, you got your Chad Brown contingent, as usual, Chad Brown going strong in this race. But there's a lot of good horses for Chad Brown. There's a lot of good horses that aren't trained by Chad Brown. We're going to start at the rail out. Moira, Matt, Moira, the daughter of Ghost Zapper, is a Canadian champion. And, and I love the name coming from uh, the uh, hit show Shits Creek. Moira, oh, yeah. Ha, yeah, of course. Moira was a wonderful character on a great show. Uh, Moira, like I said, a Canadian champion, but she hasn't run since the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, hasn't run since the Breeders' Cup when she was a nice third in the uh, in the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf uh, after having some trouble and getting checked early uh, in the race. I mean, certainly one of many good horses in this field and and obviously with chad brown having a stranglehold on this race a race that it it, it kind of uh boggles the mind to think that he's already won the race eight times and he's won seven of the last eight um and he's got five in this race uh version of the diana uh but you know uh, moira 
is going to come with good odds and, and a legitimate contender. Yeah, Moira, if she runs her best, if Kevin could, uh, trainer Kevin Attard has her ready to roll, this is a very, very good horse. And like you see, our odds, uh, like Matt alluded to, uh, we expect good odds on a lot of horses in here, Moira being one of our one of them, but of, of course, that that is a long layoff coming from early November to early July here, uh, Matt. She's been away for just over eight months since running third, beating only a length and a half in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf last time. Number two, let's start the Chad Browns. Matt, uh, Capice is uh, going to be ridden by Frankie Dettori. Capice, the daughter of Kingsman, English bred. Uh, Decent form over in England. Good form, I guess you could say. Not quite top-notch form. Top notch form. She's come over here. She's been twice uh, the favorite in two pretty big races. One at Churchill, one at Aqueduct. But she was the beaten favorite both times. Yeah, and, and Capice, as you said, is one of those Chad, Pratt, Chad Brown runners. Capice is also uh, one of the the five horses in the field that prepped for the Diana in the just the game uh, uh, about a month ago at Aqueduct. So we have five of the top six finishers from the just the game in this field. Uh, and, and, and this Chad Browner was one of them, uh, uh, you know, has run some good races, was also second in the, uh, uh, the distaff turf mile at uh, Churchill Downs, which is a grade two. Yeah, yeah. It, that first race in America was the distaff turf mile at Churchill Downs. She's only beaten a neck by Chili Flag. Now, Chili Flag, who is her stable mate, of course, for Chad Brown, has beaten her both of her races here in America. Uh, Chili Flag is streaking. Uh, Capice has not yet begun her streaking in America, but the breaks in both of those two races, she did not get out of the gate well. If you're looking for a reason why she can suddenly turn it around, now she won't be the favorite. Now she won't be uh, nearly bet as much as she has been in the first two. She was only beaten two lengths in the Chesta game. If she can get out of the gate better, she's one to think about. Number three is Mission of Joy, Matt, a daughter of Kitten's Joy. Uh, she was a two-time graded stakes winner last year as a three-year-old on the grass. Johnny Velasquez will be aboard here this time. Unfortunately, she's lost her last six races, but there are some good performances in there. The Just a Game, which you talked about a little bit already, she was third, beaten only half a length. Yeah, uh, um, coming from the barn of Graham Motion. And I'll tell you, Brian, there isn't a trainer in the country that's hotter than Graham Motion uh, uh, is recently, I saw him on Saturday winning the Belmont Derby on the turf. I mean, I don't know if that means he's going to be able to uh, turn Mission of Joy around enough to be a win contender. He's got Johnny V up and riding, and Johnny V has won the Diana six times uh, in the past. Chad Brown, worthy uh, worthy stats in in this important race. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it a lot in here, Matt. Mission of Joy is a nice filly, a nice uh, four-year-old filly. And, and that's kind of where we are with this Diana field. It is just loaded to see a horse like Mission of Joy kind of down near the bottom of the pack, perhaps, is uh, uh, shows you how good this race is. Mission of Joy cannot be discounted in this field. Certainly, we can't discount the four. Her name is Didia, Matt. Uh, this is a granddaughter of Lure, an Argentinian bred. She has won 11 out of 15 on turf, and she finally got her first grade one in America last time out. Right, and this is not Chad Brown here, Brian, either. This is for the trainer Nacho Correas um, and, and continues to be in good form. Won the New York, which is a grade one, uh, at that uh, Belmont at Saratoga meeting that you alluded to earlier in the show uh, was third in the Jenny Wiley, which is another grade one and one Brian the breed the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mayor Turf Invitational. Yeah, she's won all over the country. Actually, uh, maybe her best performance yet was last time in the New York when she uh, took to the Saratoga turf and was an impressive winner going a mile and three sixteenths. She can win, I think, at any distance nine furlongs. Uh, uh, certainly is uh, within her realm. And uh, yeah, 11 of 15 on the turf. Obviously, she likes to win. Coming off the best race yet, which was over the track, I, I, I would consider her, I know she's not one of the Chad Brown five, 
but uh, I would consider that her the horse to beat in here, Matt, and um, sh she may be the favorite, even with all those Chad Brown runners. Number five is a Chad Brown runner. Number five is Gina Romantica. Gina Romantica, Matt, has run a lot of good races. In fact, she's a two-time grade one winner. Both of those came at Keeneland. Uh, her two races this year, the daughter of Into Mischief, though, has left a little bit, a little bit to be desired. She'll need to kind of bounce back here in the Diana off those two kind of uh, subpar performances for a very good turf mare. Yeah, she's going to have to find the form that allowed her to win the first lady, one of those great ones, Brian, that you uh, referred to, Gina uh, Romantica is another one of the ones that ran in that just the game recently finished fifth and before that was seventh in the um uh in the jenny wiley in the breeders cup she ran against the boys in the breeders cup mile and finished fourth that that was that's a pretty noteworthy performance but you know the her performance in her last two races is not good enough to to be a, a win contender in here yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Matt, that she needs to improve off those two. But uh, what we saw last year, uh, and, and maybe even going back to the fall of her three-year-old season, uh, would put her in with a chance. And, and remember, we said fifth last time in the Justa game, but that was beaten less than two lengths. So she might not be far off. And yeah, that Breeders' Cup mile against the boys was a very good performance. Uh, late last year for Gina Romantica. Number six, the defending champion, Chad Brown, trains White Beam. Uh, White Beam, English bred, Matt, uh, daughter of Car uh, Caravaggio. Uh, she won this race by a nose last year. And if you remember, it was an exciting finish where she beat her heavily favored stablemate in Italian in the Diana. Uh, she hasn't won since. She's only 0 for 4. Her last race, though, uh, kind of tips off that she might be rounding into uh, uh, her best form again. Yeah, a couple of good races, Brian. Good uh, good second place finishes on the New York circuit with a second in that just a game. And you talked about how close a, a blanket finish that was. Uh, she, uh, she was right there at the end, and she was second in the bogey also. Uh, uh, white beam last year and, and i guess carrying over to this year is one of those horses that some of us at the track like to call the other chad chad browns that you know those other chad browns pop up sometimes at a good price to win big races like white bean did last year yeah she did last year in this very race on this very turf course um Oh, four since, but uh, yeah, she's she's you know there's there's going to be more than one other Chad Brown in this race, and she is certainly yeah. a uh, one of the prime other Chad Browns in here. I also put up the time form U.S. Pace projector for the first time that here, and uh, White Beam having uh, gone right to the lead in the Just a Game last time is the projected leader in here. Uh, you see a longer shot. We haven't talked about Evie Jets the nine being second early. But uh, not a slow pace necessarily, not a fast pace necessarily, they're predicting, with a lot of horses kind of in the middle of the pack. But White Beam could be the early leader, uh, according to Time Form US. Certainly a horse who won't be an early leader is yet another Chad Brown. That's Fluffy Socks, number seven. You see her well back in the field. Fluffy Socks, Matt, uh, a daughter of slumber. She's been around for a while. She's a six-year-old with $1.2 million in the bank. Um, on her best, she can win this. Uh, she doesn't win a whole lot, but she's always rallying another dangerous horse from that Chad Brown barn. Yeah, one of those Chad Brown runners that that personally I haven't had any luck with uh, in terms of wagers. It's hard to know when she's going to pop that good one, but she sure did do that uh, back in May when she won the grade three Gallaret uh, at Pimlico by almost eight lengths. Yeah, that was her first win in, in just about a year. And uh, I think it was probably her first time at a little bit lower level. They finally gave her a little bit of class break there in the Gallaret. And she she just destroyed that field at Pimlico. So Fluffy Sox may be getting some confidence. And, and, and just a little bit of confidence could be the difference when we're talking about a race where we could have, again, five or six horses within two lengths at the wire in this Diana. All right, Matt, number... 
the next horse on the list is number eight, and it's another horse who should come running late. Her name is Nisi Marie. Uh, Nisi Marie is a daughter of Cross Traffic, who I really like on the turf. Uh, uh, Cross Traffic's run on the grass. This is a four-year-old trained by Butch Reed. And uh, s- since taking to the turf, eight starts back, Matt, she's finished first or second seven times. Yeah, she was. she's a classic example of a horse ch- changing surfaces and, and completely changing her form. I mean, she was... Uh, she was running in maiden claimer, $25,000 maiden claimers, moved to the turf and, and has become a really, really solid horse uh, for Butch Reed uh, and is stabled at Parks. Um, uh, Nusi Marie had shipped up to New York, was second in that uh, New York that we mentioned earlier and was the winner of the bogey that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, Matt. In fact, in the bogey, she came flying with a finish that you don't see many horses uh, uh, come flying with. She was just absolutely beaten in mid-stretch there in the bogey, and she closed like a rocket to win that one. Uh, Not only is she really good on the grass, Matt, I think she's getting better and better. You do see a jockey change there because Luis Saez will be riding her for the first time in the Diana Joel Rosario is sticking with the Brown contingent and fluffy socks. So it'll be a new rider, but I really like what Nisi Marie has done in her last two uh, with that bogey win from the clouds and then running a good second last time to Didia. I think she's a live long shot in here, Matt. Number nine is another long shot, Evy Jets. You remember she was pretty close early on the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. And in fact, she was on the lead last time in the Just a Game. Yeah, and ended up finishing fourth in that race. Another one of these horses that we've talked about that are coming into this race, maybe not in the best form, but going to come with really good odds. Uh, uh, this uh, Evie Jets is a past graded stakes winner, won the Boston Spa, which is a grade two at Saratoga last year. Yeah, yeah, great at stakes winner at Saratoga last year. A lot of good races for her. Uh, two races back, she didn't do much, but last time she was beaten less than a length in that just a game. Um, she might be the longest shot in the field, man. I, I expect her to be the longest shot in this field, and she's a very nice turf filly. Uh, just going to, again, to the quality, overall quality of this Diana. Uh, the potential favorite, if it's not Didia, it, it should be Chili Flag. Uh, Chili Flag, I rat Ortiz, five of five, the, the, the fifth of the Chad Brown contingents. Chili Flag is a, uh, a French bred, a daughter of Cityscape, Matt. She's gotten good of late with three straight graded stakes wins at three different turf courses. Yeah, that is for sure. She has gotten good. She won that just a game that we've been talking about. She won that Distaff Turf mile that we've been talking about. And she also had a win before that earlier in the year on the Gulfstream uh, Park turf. Uh, in the grade three honey fox, uh, a, a terrific horse ridden by, this is the one that Irad is going to ride for Chad Brown. And Irad has won the Diana two times before. I don't know, Brian, whether it's Chili Flag or Didia that ends up being the favorite in a quality field like this. We're, we're looking at getting, you know, a good price for, for two very, very quality horses. Oh, yeah, there's just so many horses to bet in here that the the, the favorites, Chili Flag, Didia, Didia, Chili Flag, neither of them can be real low in this field. It, it's just too many good horses. Chili Flag, like three straight graded stakes wins. Last time was a graded uh, grade one. She's with a late rush. She's finishing these races to win, not winning by much, but she's d- doing the job when she needs to. All three of those graded stakes wins were, the, were at a mile, though, which was her thing over in Europe. Uh, so nine furlongs might be a, a little bit of a question mark for Chili Flag, but as well as she's going, an obvious, obvious horse to watch out for. The other race we're going to talk about on Saturday, Matt, is the uh, the race that uh, falls directly behind the di- or race 11 at Saratoga on Saturday will be the Sanford Stakes. Six longs for two-year-olds. This is three, Matt. And uh, the Sanford has been an important race uh, I guess for over a hundred years now, the Sanford, uh, I think you may have attended back in, in uh, uh, 1919 when Upset got the best of Man of War. That was Man of War's only loss in 21 starts, Matt. What, can you tell us a little bit what the crowd was like when Upset beat Man of War? 
Uh, yeah, much like uh, much like uh, the crowds are now, horse racing lovers. Uh, you know, I, I I wasn't able to get away with wearing you know a uh, a colorful collared shirt like this though. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, I, I couldn't resist. I'm teasing you, of course. Yeah, up, upset beat man war in the Sanford 105 years ago. Obviously, Matt wasn't alive. Obviously, I wasn't alive. But we were alive uh, for some of the other big names that have won this race. Not, not necessarily Tom Fool, uh, but we were alive when Se Secretariat won the Sanford and, and Affirmed won the Sanford. Uh, uh, a Fleet Alex more recently. You've seen so many big names run in the Sanford over the years. Let's see if we can't see some of these horses develop into something real good. And there's potential to do so. The one, Matt, is Menti. Menti is uh, Rapoli, Pletcher. And uh, Menti has a very famous full brother. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And, and, and Menti, you mentioned Todd Pletcher. Uh, we talked about in the Diana, Chad Brown's dominance of that race. Well, Todd Pletcher is just as dominant in the Sanford, having won the race eight times in the past. And Johnny V has gotten seven of those wins. Uh, one uh, made in special weight by a nose um, after leading by five at the stretch call uh, and, and, and then then just hang it, hanging on, this race is a little bit longer than that maiden win. Yeah, well, well let's talk about Menti a little bit more because Menti is the full brother of Fierceness. Uh, Fierceness, of course, was the two-year-old champion last year, a big winner of the Florida Derby and the Kentucky Derby favorite this year. Menti is his full brother by City of Light. Um, he won by a nose in that debut performance map, but it was a track record at Aqueduct, going five furlongs in 56 and change that day. I, I, I want to see that uh, horse who almost nailed him at the wire come back soon, too. Uh, Menti, a lot of speed, obviously. Got the breeding, got the rail. Pletcher and Velasquez, as you said, have dominated this race over the years. He is the likely favorite. Number two, Mr. Squeaky Wheels, Matt. Uh, I think we're going to find some odds on the son of Gormley. Uh, trained by Kevin Rice, he's only had one start. It came at Presque Isle Downs. At Presque Isle Downs, yes. As a, as a big favorite, he won that race by more than by more than three lengths. Interestingly, uh, you know, I I, I don't look that much about at, at workouts heading into big races like this but i did notice that his last two works were have not been at presque isle they have been on dirt track so uh, seemingly uh, that to me kevin rice uh, uh related to linda rice of course kevin rice has been eyeing a start and this move to the dirt with this horse and i'll tell you i had a Big win last summer at Saratoga with Kevin Rice. Yeah, Kevin Rice. Uh, Kevin Rice pulled off some uh, upsets last year at Saratoga, and and a trainer to watch. Obviously, yeah, this horse has been working in Kentucky, actually, uh, Keeneland, Ellis Park, on the dirt. So uh, that easy, pretty fast win going four and a half furlongs at Presque Isle. Maybe it's a long shot to keep an eye on here in the Sanford Stakes, Matt. Uh, number three on the list is another horse who's uh, just made one start. That's Baby Dukes. Baby Dukes coming from another trainer who doesn't mind coming to Saratoga at all and, and winning with two-year-olds. Baby Dukes is son of Maximus Mischief. His win came at Parks. Yes, and it came at, came at Parks with him as a very, very heavy favorite. So the word was out about uh, Baby Dukes. At, uh, at one of our favorite racetracks, uh, Parks. And again, another horse that is going to come with a good price, but uh, could be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I think both of those horses, Mr. Squeaky Wheels and Baby Dukes, are, are, are worth a look. Maybe a look uh, on the track there, see how they look before the race. But uh, don't discount them just because they're coming from Presque Isle and Parks. Number four is Soon to Be King. Soon to Be King is a son of King for a day. George Weaver brings this one in. Um, he's battled in his first two races. One came on the mud at Aqueduct where he was third. Then last time a game winner by a head over a fast track at Aqueduct. So he's 
He's uh, one of two, which more experienced than several horses in the race, soon to be king, should be a long shot in this field. Yeah, that's for sure. But again, George Weaver is a, one of those trainers that is very good with uh, two-year-olds. Absolutely. Three Echoes, the number five, is a, a son of Echo Town. Echo Town, of course, was trained by Steve Asmussen, a very young uh, horse who's a, a young sire. Three Echoes is also trained by Steve Asmussen. And after a game win uh, in his debut, at uh, Church Downs, he went to uh, Aqueduct and ran, uh, I'm sorry, it was at Saratoga, the Saratoga Belmont Stakes Festival. He ran a pretty good third there in the Tremont. Um, he's eligible to move forward off that performance in my eyes. You know, well, I think so, Brian. Uh, 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 Steve Asmussen uh, runs them when they're, they are in good shape. So I'm sure that uh, uh, Three Echoes may, must have taken a step forward. Three Echoes, another dangerous horse in the Sanford. Number six is the horse, though, that rolled right by him. This is Studley Do-Right. Love the name, Studley Do-Right. I also love the breeding, Matt. He's the son of Nyquist out of a Curlin mare. Uh, John Robb brings this Maryland bread. He was a $110,000 yearling purchase into the uh, Sanford off two rallying wins. You don't see a lot of two-year-olds uh, at these short distances coming from way back. And he did in the slop at Laurel in his debut. And then, of course, in the Tremont, he just rolled to uh, blow by field, including three echoes to win the Tremont at Saratoga last time. Yeah, and uh, he won. Uh, he broke his maiden at his home track at Laurel and then, uh, and then was shipped up to uh, Saratoga for the Belmont meet the Belmont Stakes meeting, uh, and and now is a stakes winner already. So uh, that kind of experience is important with these young horses. Yeah, Studley do right would appreciate a fast pace. And hey, time form US pace projector is telling us it should be a fast pace. We've already talked about Menti, the track record setter, son, uh, brother, full brother of fierceness. Followed closely by horses like uh, Baby Dukes and, and Moplex, who we're going to talk about, uh, Three Echoes. And uh, uh, Mr. Sneaky Wheels is not on there because his only race came on a different surface. But I, I think Mr. Uh, Sneaky Wheels, uh, Squeaky Wheels, excuse me, Mr. Squeaky Wheels would be another horse who could uh, uh, be out there involved in a pace that could be fast, which could be a good thing for Studley Do-Right. Yeah, that's for sure. I agree, Brian. Yeah. Number seven is a horse you see in mid-pack there, War Tax. Um, Outwork, a son of Outwork, a, a grandson of Uncle Mo for Carlos Martin. Uh, nice debut win at Aqueduct where he uh, he, he opened up easily and, and won pretty easily. Then he went out to a stakes race at Churchill, and I, I guess it was a poor start for him, and he was never involved in the Bashford Manor. Yeah, but you know that maiden win, which was uh, by two lengths, uh, the, the the word was out about him because he went off at uh, at two to one odds. So um, you know that that's telling. They they liked the horse. They knew yeah, they had something good. So another one that you know is going to come with double digit odds. Yeah, no, no. I mean, if you can draw a line through that Churchill, and maybe it's as simple with an inexperienced horse as a bad break, um, that race at Aqueduct, that debut performance as Aqueduct, is good enough to consider him as a long shot all of a sudden here uh, Saturday in the Sanford. Number eight won't be a long shot. Number eight is Moplex. Uh, complexity looks like a hot young freshman sire, Matt. This is a New York uh, uh, and he has only had one start. It came last month at Aqueduct, and uh, I, I guess you could say he won that easily. Uh, yeah, Brian, I guess a 10-length victory could be described as uh, as easily. Uh, he was a heavy favorite heading into that race. I guess another example of the word being out, that this was a good horse. Trainer Jeremiah Englehart is very, very good trainer with 
young horses with two-year-olds, having them ready to run big races at first asking. And that certainly happened there. Irad stays on board of this one, and, and Irad has won this race four times in the past. Yeah, Moplex could be any kind. Interestingly, he was purchased for 45000 as a two-year-old in training. So uh, the word wasn't out then, but it was before his debut, a 10-length win against State Breads at Aqueduct uh, in solid time. So uh, Moplex, one of the ones probably to beat here in the Sanford. And let's talk about horses to beat. Let's talk about our top picks, Matt. I'm going to let you go first. We'll go with the ladies, the grade one ladies first in that loaded Diana field. Yeah, it is a loaded field. It is a terrific, uh, terrific field, Brian. And, and and we kept saying over and over and over again that so many of them are legitimate contenders. But I don't know, Brian, is Chad Brown just an irresistible force uh, in the Diana with five of them? I, I, I you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Chad. I am going to go with Chili Flag, uh, getting Chili Flag, who is in such great form right now, possibly at three to one, is attractive to me. Yeah, well, that she won't be the other Chad Brown, Matt. I, I think you found the no. favorite, but you, you're 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 right. Uh, three straight great at stakes wins. You you simply cannot ignore Chili Flag, and I, you can't ignore Didia as well. Uh, Chad Brown will be dangerous with his other horses. I went for a long shot, though. I'm looking for some real odds here because I absolutely love what Nisi Marie has been developing into uh, for trainer Butch Reed. The daughter cross traffic, uh, a four-year-old, she's a little bit younger than a lot of these, uh, but she's getting better and better. Loved her bouquet win. And her last time at Saratoga might have been a little bit longer than she really wants when she rallied for second. Uh, behind Didia in the New York, but we'll get good odds on her again. I think Nisi Marie is becoming a force with that late run. She's my Diana pick at odds. How about the Schuylerville, Matt? Schuylerville, Brian, I think we're flip-flopping places in here. I'm going with the big long shot. Uh, I am going to go with Mr. Squeaky Wheels. Um, when we were doing the rundown, I talked about how uh, trainer Kevin Rice uh, – has aimed to pull upsets at Saratoga. I like those two uh, dirt workouts preparing for this. I'm going with a bomb, Brian, Kevin Rice, Mr. Squeaky Wheels. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck, Matt. That that will be odds for sure. Maybe the longest shot on the board there in the Sanford, and I can't throw them out. Uh, I, I am going to pick Studley Do Right, though. I, I'm kind of a believer after. Uh, flying up to win his debut on the slop at Laurel and then coming to Saratoga and just uh, rolling late. I'm, I'm picking two horses in these races that like to come flying late. Studley do right for me. There's a lot of speed in here. I think the son of Nyquist can do it again. Neither of us are on Menti, who uh, will likely be the favorite off that track record performance in his debut. Fierceness is full brother. Hey, Matt, let's get a parting shot from you opening weekend at Saratoga. Yeah, sure, Brian. Nothing more exciting than uh, opening day, opening week at Saratoga. I'm excited to be there, even even with rain forecast. I'll look forward to seeing some of you uh, Horse Center fans around the grounds at the spa. And as always, thanks for watching our show. Yes, that's that. Hey, you hit on it there. At the, the whole, the, you hit on everything, Matt. But. I like the fact that you thanked everybody for watching. We sure do appreciate our viewers. What would we be without our viewers? Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel on Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do it. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment. Uh, turn on those notifications. We appreciate you here at Horse Center. We also appreciate Candace Curtis for the race graphics, our friend in the Louisville home office, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars and, of course, Timeform U.S., for the pace projections we use every week. Matt, next week we're going to be talking Jersey. We're going to be talking the Haskell of Big Day at Monmouth Park. You don't want to miss that show, my friend. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, two Jersey breads, Brian and Matt, looking forward to the Haskell. That's right. We always look forward to the Haskell, not just for the hats either. Have a good week. Good luck. Enjoy opening weekend at Saratoga, and we'll be talking Haskell next week right here on Horse Center.